Hey, thanks for coming back to the channel. In this week's video, I thought since we're halfway through 2017 and I haven't done a what's in my bag video in quite a while, I would do one now with my bag just as it was coming back from the last gig. I'll mention here before going any further that most of the work that I do is with companies that provide a work box for every single gig with all sorts of tools, diagnostic, test tools, plenty of microphones, tons of uh, different stuff that you would normally need, a first aid kit, all of that comes in a work box for most of the companies I work for. And then I'll grab things like talkback mics or uh, direct boxes I might wanna bring or any other specialty stuff depending on the job. But this is just how my bag was after the last gig. A good place to start might be the bag I've been using recently. And I've been using a simple uh, North Face, it's the Hotshot model backpack. It's got just a main compartment, it's got a laptop, padded laptop section there. The front compartment opens up all the way and you've got a soft padded compartment that works well for slipping iPads into, a nice place to loop on keys and any sort of credentials and some good auxiliary pockets there. I also like this bag because it's got a lot of places on the outside where you can connect things. I've also got a couple pockets down the side where I put my reusable mug and that comes with me on every single job. So I'm gonna pack the bag up as we go. So the first two things that always go into the bag, no matter where I'm going, what I'm doing, my rain jacket. And this is a North Face rain jacket that collapses down into a pocket like most of them do. You might be expected to work in uh, bad weather and it pays off to have a simple but effective pack down rain jacket that you can always have with you. So that goes in the bottom of the bag. Next thing, again, no matter where I'm going, I just got back from a trip to Las Vegas. It was 115 degrees there most days. And I had a simple hoodie with me in my bag, of course, as I always do. In this line of work, you're oftentimes working in well air conditioned places like hotel ballrooms, and it always pays off to have an extra layer just in case. So the next critical items that I always take Good pair of work gloves. These I featured in a little post uh, back a couple months ago when I got them. They're the CLC Work Gear Handyman Model Glove and they've been holding up really well. They've been washed a couple of times. You can see uh, where they're starting to wear a little bit, but so far the stitching has been awesome. Couple of very critical things to have in my opinion, and that is a cell phone charging solution. And then this guy right here, which I'm using to power the Tascam recorder right now, is the Jackery battery backup that I've talked about before. Lots of folks that watch the channel have bought these through the Amazon affiliate link below. And this is just a fantastic way to power anything that powers off a USB. There is a flashlight built in. Hopefully you can see that I just turned it on but I also like to bring this guy here and this is a USB powered uh, like camping work light and I can turn it on here and you can see that glows just a nice uh, blue because I put a simple blue balloon over it and that's a really handy work light around front of house and that goes into my adapter bag here I'll run through these real quick just to get them off the table so we can move along a uh, pair of standard Apple headphones uh, just a pair of earbuds 3.5 millimeter or what the kids call these days an aux cord. Always good to have one of these. You never know when you'll need it. I carry a female XLR to 3.5 millimeter cable and that gets used most often in conjunction with the Tascam DR05. And this is an awesome little field recorder. I use it for voiceovers for these videos sometimes on the road, but it's also got a nice input there and a lot of times I will just take a mono feed off of a mixing board or a press mult if need be uh, to create a recording. So that's a really handy device and uh, lasts forever on batteries and a simple micro SD card, you get a ton of recording out of this. So that's a must have for sure. An additional speak on barrel uh, connector. Now I usually have two of these. I don't know what's happened to the other, uh, but obviously they walk off occasionally on gigs. So it's always good to have a couple in your kit. After that, I keep some of the most common adapters that I use most often that I just like to have my own personal version of in case the workbox doesn't have them. Things like the tippering sleeve to female XLR. After that, I carry a single uh, Switchcraft 55 dB attenuator. And this is really handy for knocking a line level signal down to mic level. I'm only carrying one of these because typically when I need to use it, it's in a single instance for feeding something like a camera. And I just want to make sure that I definitely have one on hand. 
I carry a pair of 20 dB pads. The 20 dB pad is typically what I would use just plugging a hot signal into a mixing board like a Soundcraft mixer that doesn't have a pad on the input. So a pair of those covers uh, hot stereo sources quite nicely. I like to have just a simple high quality short XLR cable. It's always nice to have one short one uh, in your kit that you know is definitely good high quality. This is a Canary? No, this is Megami. Just a single three foot XLR cable. I also carry a couple of cable turnarounds and I've just got the female version of this here. I'm not sure where my male one has gotten to. It's uh, around here somewhere, but female to female XLR. These are from the AudioPile website, but just a simple turnaround. I carry usually uh, one or two in male and female and those can be lifesavers for sure. So that's it for my adapter kit. Pretty much everybody I work for carries an extensive adapter adapter kit in a workbox, and I just want to have a few things that I definitely know I'm going to use. The computer's pretty simple. It's a 2015 MacBook Pro, and I purchased this model not only because it has an SD card reader, Thunderbolt, USB 3, and I don't have to carry dongles for all that stuff, but mostly because of the MagSafe power connector uh, on the end, which is an absolute must have, in my opinion, for production environments. The amount of times that gets kicked out or tripped on and saves the computer from falling down, I can't begin to describe, and I don't know why they got rid of it. Uh, along with the computer, obviously, standard power brick for that, just an Apple power supply. This is a standard uh, 32 gig fast USB stick uh, that I've got Windows 10 on currently, which is very handy to be able to boot to Windows without keeping it on my internal hard drive on my actual computer. I've got this simple and cheap Anchor USB 3 to USB 3 hub and RJ45 uh, network adapter, and that comes in very handy for attaching to show control networks or doing things like network queues in QLab, which I posted about just the other day. Definitely a must have now that uh, a lot of computers don't come with a uh, network jack. And then this Lacie USB 3 and Thunderbolt hard drive, and this is the main drive that I edit most of my videos off of, and just generally my mobile drive. Sometimes I carry two or three of these depending on what I'm doing, but at least one of these for sure in my bag at all times. So what else was in my bag on the last gig? We've talked about this recently. The Rat Sound Sniffer Sender has definitely been in there for the last few weeks, and I've been using it quite a bit still. Be sure to check out the video about that if you haven't seen one before. They're a really handy tool. Obvious tool for being an A1 is a pair of headphones. You've got to have a pair of headphones. A lot of times I'll travel with a pair of noise-canceling headphones for the airplane, but I almost always have my Audio-Technica ATH-M50 uh, headphones in my bag. These are getting a little worn at this point, and I'd really like to have the pair with the cable that disconnects. So I think these might be coming towards the end of their run, but I will definitely be sticking with the Audio-Technica headphones in the future. Coming down to the last few items of what I've had in my bag recently, flashlights. Mini mag light, talked about this in the last video, very handy. I just like these original mini mag lights. They are very good and very reliable, and I've always got AA batteries somewhere on the gig. Headlamp, I can't tell you how often this little guy gets used through the course of a summer, uh, especially, but also throughout the year. I like to have one with a red light as well as the uh, main light. And this one's got a couple of different power levels for that main light, but the red lamp is very helpful when you're trying to preserve your night vision and find something that's fallen on the floor, or if you're crawling around backstage trying to trace down a cable path. I also like this one because it has a lock or hold that keeps it from turning on in my bag, and it takes normal AAA batteries, which again, very easy to source. You can also pull this strap off and use this as a clip to clip onto things like your belt or your hat brim, I guess, if you really wanted to. But this one is a P-Tech model, and I think I picked this one up, uh, I don't know, maybe $20 or so. Very handy to have. Even the cheapest headlamp will save you when you're trying to work outside at night in the summer, though, wrapping cables in the dark. Bosch. Laser measurer, this one goes up to 250 feet. This is the one you can buy. They sell these in places like Lowe's. Uh, frankly, if I was gonna buy one of these again anytime soon, I would not buy this model, just as it 
isn't quite good enough to work at those longer distances outdoors in sunlight. And that's something I need more often these days is to be able to measure long throws in direct sunlight outdoors. Uh, so while this is great for indoors and most general uses, I wouldn't recommend this one. I'll link one below that uh, is a little more capable. Multi-tool of choice. This is a Gerber suspension model. I don't really like it. I think it's too heavy. It seems like a lot of people prefer the Leatherman Wave. I definitely want to get one of those the next time I lose this one. But I've had this for a good number of years now, mostly because I don't carry it that often. But this goes on local jobs whenever I think of it, and it does a pretty good job. A must-have for me personally is a Motorola shoulder microphone. Now, this is a model that I picked up on eBay for, I think I paid like $20 or so for it. They're a good bit more expensive new. This is the one that has the output for the separate earbud, which is nice. I don't really use that often, but having a microphone that you can attach to your shoulder and actually hear the radio when somebody's calling you is an absolute lifesaver. When I've got a radio clipped to my belt during load in or setup, nine times out of 10, I just can't hear it. There's enough noise going around forklifts and people moving things. And with the speaker pointed away from me on my waist, I just can't hear it. So this is something I always carry no matter what. I always have a shoulder mic and I use it on almost every job. Going along with communications and radio, a surveillance earpiece uh, is a critical thing for me, again, on corporate jobs. Uh, if somebody doesn't bring intercom and there's two-way radios, they might have earpieces or over-the-ear things for the crew to use, and I just like to have my own. I know this one fits. I know this one works. I know it's comfortable. It's got an earpiece that's clean. Last few bits and pieces, Kleenex. Always good to have some Kleenex. Some Ricolas, it's always good to have these, especially on like recording and broadcast gigs where you don't really want to be sitting there in a studio hacking and uh, making any sort of noise. These can be a real lifesaver. Along those lines, some emergency is always good to have in your bag. If you're pushing a lot of long hours, it is worth having one of these in your water uh, every so often. Benadryl tablets, always really smart to have these. I can't tell you how many times over the years I've had uh, other people, usually musicians, eat something on a gig and need Benadryl in an emergency. Uh, so I always keep a few tablets. If I'm having some sort of issue or somebody else is, these can be really good uh, in helping just hold you over until you can get to a pharmacy or even seek medical attention, depending on the reaction somebody's having. Equally as important to those are some Imodium tablets. Uh, traveling, you never know when something you've eaten is going to affect you adversely. And it's always good to have something like this in your bag. Just carry a few of them, just again, to get you to that next uh, stop. Ibuprofen, same idea, headaches happen. Gotta be prepared for that, just a small box. I usually refill this uh, at home from a bigger box. Business cards. I usually carry this little uh, cell phone tripod. Even if you don't do YouTube videos, this can be really handy for taking selfies and things like that. When you're traveling, it's always fun to take a proper picture or doing a time lapse. A uh, little tripod like this is always in my bag and I use it quite a bit. This is the magnetic one, which is uh, really helpful for sticking it to things on gigs. Zeiss lens cleaning wipes. I use these all the time on my glasses, on my cameras, and uh, they come in really handy. These are super cheap and you can get them in really big boxes of like 100 or 500, and I use them constantly. A couple more adapters I missed earlier. This is a 3.5 millimeter to a quarter inch, a pair of quarter inch. So it just separates out what's on uh, the tip and the ring of the 3.5 millimeter to quarter inch cables. This can be really handy for dealing with different uh, things in the camera world, but also plugging into different mixing boards and interfacing with other unbalanced audio gear. This is another, uh, what the kids would call an aux cord. This is just a right angle and it's a stretchy one. Comes in handy to have these. Cliff bar, you gotta have some sort of snack, a cliff bar, some dried fruit or something. It's always good to have a couple of these, that way when dinner inevitably or lunch doesn't get called on time or doesn't get delivered when you expect it, you can have something and be self-sufficient and not be getting lightheaded or getting headaches from lack of food. And then these are in my bag and the camera that I'm shooting this with right now is a Panasonic G7, uh, would also normally be in my bag. This is pretty much what my bag looks like now. Mostly filled and I would normally carry a couple of extra batteries for the camera. 
uh, some SD cards and an SD card wallet. I don't have the pouch right here for that, but this stuff normally goes in another pouch. And super tip for traveling, if you do carry cameras, is spend the, I think this was like 10 or $12 on a USB charger that charges the model battery your camera takes. This allows me to charge two camera batteries for my Panasonic G7, either off this battery bank, or I could charge them. A lot of airplanes have USB ports now for charging. So it lets you charge uh, your camera batteries without having to carry the charger that came with your camera, which a lot of times those are just really bulky and, uh, and not very travel friendly. So these are well worth the price. So that's my whole kit. That's what I've had in my bag recently. Uh, pro tip, always carry a hat. Uh, if you're doing any sort of outdoor work or even if you're doing indoor work, especially, and you might have to be outdoors for a few minutes doing a load out or a load in and in the rain, if you're like me and you wear glasses, you need something to keep the rain off your glasses. That and my rain jacket allow me to work in bad weather without being being bothered by it. Always store your gloves if you can, especially after the gig, on the outside of your bag. Gloves, no matter what you do, for some reason, these gloves will get kind of funky. So that's it for now. Thanks for watching this video. Just a quick look at what's been in my bag this year. If you have any questions about any of the stuff I showed in this video, let me know in the comments below, and I'll link everything I talked about in the video in the description below so you can find it easily. So thanks for watching. Be sure to like if you enjoyed this video and subscribe if you want to stay up to date with future videos. If you want to help me make more of these videos, please consider shopping through those affiliate links I mentioned in the description below, or you can join directly on Patreon for exclusive member-only content. Thanks again. I'll see you next time.